Hello everyone, this is Hey Zeus, and today I am going to teach you about um, basically key logging or just hijacking um, credentials on social media websites. It's easy to do, and today we are going to use appropriately uh, Hacker News, but the same principle applies anywhere. Uh, traditionally, this is often done on Facebook. Uh, you just go into a place like a public library, and I mean, not you, hopefully you're not doing this, but the way this is done is that you go to a place like a um, public library and you know, you have Facebook open, someone just comes and logs into it, you know, hits login. And what they don't know is that you went into the source code here on elements and edited it live so that the page isn't what they think it is. It's not the authentic code for facebook.com. And you can even see that Facebook is like, hey, if you're going into the console, Something weird might be happening, it's probably a scam. That's because people even trick people remotely into doing this to themselves. You know, telling them, hey, if you go into Facebook and you enter this, you can hack someone's account, when in reality, it actually gives them access to your account. But today we're gonna do it with Hacker News. So let's get started, stealing Hacker News credentials. So, so you can imagine we're just gonna leave this open. Maybe we're at a place like Berkeley's Computer Science Department or something, where we know that a lot of people are gonna be using Hacker News. And we just want to leave this open in a place like a library so that when someone comes and logs in, you know, they hit login, we get their credentials. And they won't even know about it. So how do we do this? What we do is we go to the elements, uh, specifically this form right here. And we see that it's part of this form element and has an action. And the action is the same page we're on, except instead of a get request, it will be a post request. Well, what we're going to do is send this action somewhere else. Let's just send it to localhost on port 9001 slash leak or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, we would normally send this to an external server that we control, but I'm just going to do it on localhost, the same machine we're on. We create a server that's listening for the credentials. credentials. Um, again, this would typically be more sophisticated than this, and I'll show you exactly why it should be more sophisticated. But we hit login, and I'm just going to type like John Doe and put, you know, my password. You can't see it, but it says my password. And then I hit login. Now the page isn't loading, obviously, because we sent the request to localhost. So we can go look at our little local server. And we see that a request came in. And I'll zoom in so you can see this. So we have a post request to slash leak to the host name localhost 9001. Our browser sends a ton of headers. It tells them what, what operating system I'm on, Mac OS. Tells them I'm on Google Chrome, everything. So that's terrible for privacy, but anyway. Down here, we get the actual body of the post request, which says go to news. That means that when we log in, Hacker News redirects us to the news page. The account is John Doe. And here we have it. The password is my password. So what happens next? Well, that's a great question. So what we would expect to happen is to get redirected. Right? So what we would have the server do, <clears throat> what we would have the server do, in fact, I can just show you what we'll have the server do. So we're gonna go over here, hit, the, hit our, some username, log in, open the networking tab so we can see the response and we can actually give it a real response. So let's go over here and look at the response. So I'm gonna give it an actual response Let's just see how the browser reacts. Log back out. Okay. And we end it. And okay, it still wasn't happy with us. But <laughs> oh, right, because it tried to access news on localhost. I said slash news, so it looked on localhost. That's no problem. Let's see what we would have done. Uh, move. Let's see if I can find it. We don't, we don't really have to worry about this. We've already done the hacking part, right? We got their password. But just for fun, let's just see where it's getting slash news from. Definitely not the content security policy. Server, security, ah, location. Location slash news, that's the problem. So what it should be saying is hackernews.com, sorry, news.ycombinator.com slash news. Here it just says location news. But in any case, obviously we wouldn't be doing it manually like this on the command line, like we're in some 90s hacker movie. Uh, we would have a script 
like a command and control server that would be saying, oh, okay, have them send the request in and then redirect them to the appropriate page and actually log them in. So what the server would do, you would enter your credentials here. The server would log them so that the hacker can steal your account. But then so that you didn't know anything had happened to prevent this from happening, the server would have to be more sophisticated. It would have to then go log in for you. Using these credentials, the server would use something like Selenium to log into Hacker News, get a session, and then resp respond with a valid session so that you'd be logged in. That's how that works. So that's it. That's, that's how you hijack a social media account. Uh, it's not key logging in the way we normally think of it, but I call it social media key logging. This idea of infecting someone's session like this so that you can see what's really going on with their username and password, which you should not be able to do. Is there a cure to this? Um, obviously we could cryptographically verify the content of a page against some hash and see if it had been modified. Um, that would definitely solve this, right? And it would have to be signed with their key. That would work. Um, they don't do that right now. I'm sure there's good reasons why that's not done, but that would be a way it could be fixed. But as things are right now, there's really not much you can do about this. Just don't log into social media accounts from libraries, I guess. So, and two-factor authentication. I mean, that would solve this, like two-factor authentication solves this for individual websites, but what can you do if you have to use a website like Hacker News that doesn't allow two-factor authentication? There's not really much you can do about that. So I hope this is educational for you. I hope that was as fascinating to you as it was to me when I first learned about it. Thank you so much for your time. Goodbye.